We did it once. It's the one year anniversary. We did it twice. This is Undertale, three years later. But let's do it right this time. Today I want to talk about a game that has greatly affected my life, and a game that has brought me many memories that I'll never forget. Undertale. Being born to the masses five years ago today as I write this, it's impacted many people's lives and brought happy memories to them, including mine. I watched the live orchestral concert for Undertale's fifth anniversary with a few friends, and it made me just lay back and remember. I first played Undertale December 25th, 2015 when I bought it for me and my best friend at the time. It was a new experience for me, as for someone who didn't have that much experience with games prior. I mainly just played Roblox, <laughs> yeah. But when I indulged and tapped into Undertale, it brought me into something entirely new. I played the game 14 times in the span of December 25th to summer 2016, amassing over 130 hours on Steam on this game. Given a good 20 to 30 of these could have been AFK'd, but asking me to remember that exactly should be a federal crime. After the anniversary, I felt my heart spark again decided to replay it during the pacifist route with a few friends to watch me. And this? This got me emotional as fuck. Show sure you'll be able to protect humanity. I, I can't do the voice anymore, I'm, I'm emotional now. I feel, I, I feel down bad. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm this game was like the last. This, this game was like the last thing I had before my childhood ended, and it never left me. It's one of the only things that never left me. So I just for five for half a decade, dog. I've cried twice while writing a video essay for it. This video means a lot to me, and this fucking game just means everything to me, bro. And I really hope I can express that, cause god damn, this game is just so. I think me playing this again for the first time since 2K17 really made me appreciate the smaller things. Literally, like, everything. But I mean, I am much older now, but there's one thing that never left me. I've always had an obsession with Azrael Dreamer. <laughs> He's been my profile picture on at least one platform since 2016. I literally adore him. So I guess even when I distanced myself from this game, I've had to be a part of me in some way. I, I even made multiple videos on this game in the past couple years, but none of them have done it justice. And on Halloween 2018, when Deltarune Chapter 1 came out, you know damn well I was on that. And here's something from those times. Um, alright. <gasps> it's this guy! Hello, everyone. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Wait. R-A-L-S-E-I. Wait. <laughs> no! No! It's Asriel! <laughs> it's Asriel, dude! <gasps> I think I have asthma now. Oh, my God. Here's one thing regarding Undertale that pisses me off though. A majority of people absolutely adore this game in its prime, but we all know about cringe culture. If you don't know what cringe culture is, it was the era in 2016 to 2018 with commentary YouTubers, major internet trolls, and when the Urban Dictionary definition of edgelords were thriving. And if you like shit like furries, My Little Pony, FNAF, Undertale, etc., you were deemed as cringy and bullied out of your mind. So a lot of things had fallen out of love. But the era of cringe culture is over now for the most part, and people are able to enjoy what they like. It just really upsets to me because I was one of those people who went through a phase of just being a dick and suppressing a majority of my interests. But like I said, it's over now. At least, in the part of the internet where I reside, this is the case, as long as it isn't illegal or directly harming anyone. One more topic I talked about in 2018 and 2019 was the stigma of fandoms. Undertale being a top 3 example, where people said the fandom ruined the game or made it once more, I'm sorry. Cringe, eh? And honestly, my response to this, I've kept the same opinion for years and it'll never change. A fandom never has, and never can, ruin a game. A couple bad apples in a group doesn't spoil the core product, and just because a lot of younger people, toxic people, or for some reason cosplayers enjoy Undertale, that does not ruin the game itself. You can enjoy anything. That is perfectly okay. Don't be ashamed of it. Sans is dope. The corny dialogue is dope. It's all fine. I sound like a hippie in the 70s trying to achieve peace but you get my point. You can find love in anything, and a fandom simply enjoying themselves isn't gonna burn your house down. What's more though, we're past this era for the most part, thankfully. This is an ode to Undertale. I think the biggest thing that really impacts me and stems my tears from my eyes is the characters and story. Oh damn, where to start? I mean, you're a child who falls down the mountain for a reason that's undisclosed but hinted towards at the end of True Pacifist, taken under care by Toriel aka the King's Ex, and have to fight through a broken heart to let you go. Then going through Snowden meeting all the dogs, the skeleton brothers to going on a date with one, traveling through the beautiful waterfall playing the piano and screaming at Temmie's theme, fighting the captain of the royal god herself, meeting Alphys of Hotland, the royal scientist who must help find a way out of the underground, to going through multiple obstacles, 
goes on to Metaton's ex, the gay legend Sho, to hooking Alphys up with their crush and finding her in her hidden laboratory, to kneeling before the king and having all your friends come with you for one final time and saving the royal child who had lost their life to the humans, comforting them as they cry and accept the reality just to make them feel loved again. <sighs> the story could sound lame to some in core belief, but it's at most impressive to me that a team of two and a few unnamed on a team did all of this. I consider myself to be a creative, but I can never imagine this. I could never imagine creating anything like this. The amount of times I've cried at this game, shit. And even with the characters, I haven't had any major problems with my parents, at least not for a while, but Toriel made me feel a type of motherly love that I haven't felt for a long time. The type of person that would sing you a lullaby after a long fight or breakdown. One that would constantly baby you yet comfort you through everything. Metaton, a rising star in the underground. Well, the only star in the underground, while also being a gay icon. I'm just saying. He has the charisma to be huge. The star of the stage. The bon appetit after a good meal. And the love between Undyne and Alphys. The petty crush. Shit. I'm dealing with this right now in reality. Love is a funny ass thing. And being presented so childish just makes me feel... I don't know. Real? I'm running out of poetic things to say, yet I feel chills. What I'm trying to say is... Every character is different. Has their own personality and different reactions to everything. A good variety and there's someone for everyone to love. The amount of care and extent of relatableness you could find ranging from anyone is really meaningful to me. And that leaves that. And like so, one more thing that brought me to Cloud9 was the soundtrack. God motherfucking damn. The Undertale soundtrack is my favorite video game OST of all time and absolutely nothing has beat it. Nowadays when I hear a song from the soundtrack like His Theme, Hopes and Dreams, Heartache, or fuck it, literally any song, it hits me so hard emotionally I'm anxious to purposely turn them on. Toriel's theme during her boss fight where she's fighting against herself to not let you go, the Sans theme kicking in after the whoopee cushion trick, Asgore's theme as he fights to get the final soul, Flowey's theme during his boss fight in the neutral route, the song that might play when you fight Sans, Naps the Blook's mixtape in his crib, Asriel, fucking dreamer. It aches me. It shapes my entire being. And this? This is what took me away from reality the other night. The 5th anniversary Undertale Orchestral concert. This took me away from anything I was worrying about for 2 hours, and reminded me about a source of magic that brought everyone together. It was trending on Twitter with everyone going bad shit. The stream chat was full of people being emotional out of their minds, and just everything about it was perfect. Toby Fox, a man who did it all from his bedroom, years later, had an orchestra performing his entire game soundtrack live to over 60,000 viewers at once, while his game was trending on Twitter with over 300,000 tweets. FIVE YEARS AFTER THE GAME WAS RELEASED! Oh, 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 that's, oh, that's, that's actually, that's creative as fuck. Oh. Oh, 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 no, no. Only one, only one. Only one, baby. <laughs> so it leaves there. It's a piece of me and I'll always hold the music to a high regard. I'm getting a little emotional, but there's not many things that have stuck in me this long. I didn't expect to enjoy something like this again, but alas, I once more feel like I'm 12 doing the voices with my friends. Things like this are emotional and endless, and I know that no matter how far and how long the time has passed, I'll always have one piece of my childhood, and one piece of myself that I can find on Undertale. A game that went beyond an indie developer's dream, and to find a lot of people's interest for a big period of time. I don't know what to say, but let me recoup real quick. Thank you, Undertale. Thank you for being one part of me I can't let go after I've lost most of myself through the years. Happy fifth birthday. This was an ode to Undertale. You must have a place to return to, do you know? Suck your fat, milky mummers! Shut the hell up! <laughs> <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable. I'll suck your fat, I'm looking right now, right now! <laughs> What? You just want my milk hoods. That No! <laughs> no! No, no. no that's an AU, no. bro. This is the real universe mm. for you. <laughs> oh, bro, bro. You are